All right, moving forward with this KSP concept, we can do uh, what is called precipitation calculations. And as it says here, precipitation is merely another way of looking at our solubility equilibrium. Will precipitation occur for starting ion concentrations? So in other words, with given concentrations, will the reaction, the dissolving of the solute, Will it go forward, meaning further dissolving, or will it go in the reverse direction, meaning precipitation? And just like we've done with previous K expressions, when we're trying to see if the equilibrium will go to the right or left, we calculate what we remember as Q. And so for solubility, we call Q, QC, the solubility ion product. If our Q is equal to KSP, then the reaction is at equilibrium. And that's, we would have a saturated solution. If our Q value is greater than KSP, that means we have a lot of ions present in solution. And just like in the past, when Q is greater than K, the reaction would shift to the left, towards the reactants, which in this case would be the solid, solute. So yes, we would see precipitation. If Q is less than KSP, then the reaction is going to head to the right. It would head towards ionization, so we would have an unsaturated solution. So let's see how this looks like with a calculation. So if I have lead to nitrate and sodium chloride, and I add them to water so that I get a solution that is 0.05 molar lead nitrate and 0.1 molar sodium chloride, will lead to chloride precipitate out. Now, I'm not worried about sodium nitrate because, of course, sodium nitrate is completely soluble, so we would not have any precipitation of that salt whatsoever. So we're just focusing on the lead to chloride. So what we need to do is focus on the lead to chloride dissolving reaction. So here we see our PBCl2 splitting into our lead 2 ion and two chlorides. So our QC expression, which would be the same as our KSP expression, would be the concentration of lead 2 times the concentration of chloride squared. And when we look up at our problem, we can see that we are given our concentrations because 0.05 molar lead nitrate will mean I have 0.05 molar of my lead ion and 0.1 molar sodium chloride would mean that I have 0.1 molar chloride. So I simply have to plug those values into my expression and when I do that I see that QC is equal to 5 times 10 to the negative fourth. Then I can compare that to my KSP value which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth so since it is greater, yes, we will see precipitate. And it would only precipitate until equilibrium is reached, and we would have our saturated solution at that point. These precipitation calculations are very important in the lab and in chemical industry. For example, ocean water is filled with magnesium ions, so we can precipitate them out in order to manufacture magnesium metal, that lovely ribbon of metal that we burn in lab, but don't look at the flame because it's really bright, but we can't help ourselves. Also, as it says, there are solubilities and precipitation of salts in the ocean and other bodies of waters or underground and aquifers. That's a major studying area for environmental engineers. Now as far as these calculations, yes, the previous one, you may be asked to do that, but more often you would see that you would be given two solution volumes and concentrations and ask if a precipitation form. Kind of like when we were calculating buffers, we were typically given a volume and concentration of our solutions being mixed together to form a buffer. So it looks like this. If I have 50 milliliters of 0.001 molar barium chloride added to 50 milliliters of 0.001 molar sodium sulfate, will barium sulfate precipitate out? Again, not worried about sodium chloride, completely soluble. So I focus on my barium sulfate reaction and I see that my Q expression would be concentration of barium times concentration of sulfate. 
I don't just have the numbers in the problem to plug in, so I have to find my barium ion concentration and my sulfate ion concentration. But I'm given volume and molarity, so I simply have to take molarity times volume in liters, and I get the moles of each of the ions present. We're mixing the two solutions together, though, so 50 mils and 50 mils gives us 100 milliliters total, 0.1 liters. Now I have my concentrations. Now I can plug into the Q expression and decide whether or not precipitate will, a precipitate will form. And so when we do plug it in, we get 2.5 times 10 to the negative eighth, which is greater than the KSP that was given to us, 1.1 times 10 to the negative 10. So again, yes, a precipitate would form. On a final note, we have this technique known as fractional precipitation. And it's where you would have a mixture of ions in a solution, and you would add a reactant that would cause them per to precipitate out. And one would come first, and we could separate that precipitate from another. So here is an example, a solution made with 0.1 molar barium chloride and 0.1 molar strontium chloride. If I would like to get the barium and strontium ions out, I could add potassium chromate, and I could get bar barium chromate and strontium chromate to precipitate out. So which one will precipitate first? Now I doubt that we'll see an AP question like this on the exam, but it's definitely a, a first year collegiate chemistry type question. The first thing to note is, in order for fractional precipitation to even be an option, our KSP values have to be significantly different. So at least I would say, you know, a power of 10 to the 4 difference. If they're super close together, then the precipitation would occur pretty much simultaneously and that wouldn't help us at all as far as separating the ions. So here we see 1 times 10 to the negative tenth for barium chromate, 3.5 times 10 to the negative fifth for strontium chromate. Qualitatively, you can pretty much assume that usually the smaller KSP value is the one that's going to precipitate first. But mathematically, you can solve it like this. So for barium chromate, I take the KSP for barium chromate, and its expression. I know the barium ion concentration from the problem, 0.1 molar, and when I solve for chromate, when the chromate concentration by adding the potassium chromate gets to 1.2 times 10 to the negative ninth molar, I would start to see barium chromate precipitate out. I could do the same calculation for strontium chromate, and I would find that when it gets to 3.5 times 10 to the negative fourth molar, that's when the strontium chromate would precipitate out. And that's what this kind of says. I slowly add potassium chromate, the barium chromate starts to precipitate, and then once there's more chromate present, the strontium chromate would start to precipitate. So of course, you would be able to figure out when we would want to stop that process so that we could have as pure samples as possible. Last little calculation here. When the strontium chromate starts to precipitate, how much barium is still left in the solution? And so again, I could use my barium chromate KSP 1.2 times 10 to the negative tenth, and I can solve by plugging in the chromate concentration 3.5 times 10 to the negative fourth, which is the concentration when the strontium starts to precipitate, and I find that at that point the barium concentration is 3.4 times 10 to the negative seventh molar. I divide that by my original concentration, 0.1 molar, and I find that there's just a tiny bit present still, 0.00034% of the barium ions are still present. If that KSP difference between the two precipitates was even larger, then you would probably not have any of the other ion present. If they were closer together, then you would ha start to have a significant amount of ions still present, and fractional precipitation probably wouldn't be your best option. I hope this helps with your KSP endeavors. I'll see you soon.